All right, real quick, just in case it's not obvious, this video was shot over three different sections of time. Other videos have been shot and uploaded in between those sections. So the time frame jumps around a little bit, about a week or so. Um, the clips more or less go in order, and the information doesn't really matter as far as what's out of date, but just to make that a little clearer. All right, enjoy. It's a little bit of a long one. All right, well, since the last video was 60 frames per second, and the rest of this doesn't need to be, I guess there'll be separate uploads. So let's discuss. Um, so again, sorry for the voice. Apparently I tested positive for COVID. Had to call in the last two nights at work. Feeling a lot better, which is why I'm down here doing stuff, but I'm obviously, obviously still affected by it. Um, as you can see by this lovely hazy environment, I now have a hazer. So after much deliberation, I decided to go for the more expensive one. I forgot you were still on. Um, it's the Hurricane 1DX from Chavet DJ or something like that. Uh, it went on sale. <clears throat> it actually went as low as 189 But it was... I don't think it was sold from Amazon. It might have still been shipped by... But either way, um, so then it went to 209 which is still like $40 less than when I added it to my cart, shipped and sold through Amazon. The reviews on both were spotty. You know, a lot of people said they died or leaked or whatever for both this and the other model. So whatever, I took my chances and went with the better one. Um, so far it seems fine. You know, a lot of these Amazon reviews, you never really know if they're even using the thing right. So that finally came. Um, it was gonna take a lot longer for the uh, beam splitter fog juice, well, haze juice, which is what's in there now to come. And I thought I was gonna come down here a lot sooner and play with this stuff. But again, I got sick and work and everything else. Um, so I ended up not. So I ordered a pro haze fluid as well, which was gonna get here faster. But they both got here by the time I actually did anything, so this is the beam splitter that's in it. <coughs> Works pretty damn good. Even on haze setting one, you know, it's plenty fine. It's not setting off my smoke alarm, which is a plus. It isn't supposed to. Um, but, you know, there's a possibility. See how long it takes for this to clear out. Um, so I did order my big boy... $300 laser um, It had a 10% off coupon finally, so I went ahead and ordered it After much deliberation. I got that at the same time. I got the the hazer um, But Amazon lost it <clears throat> so as of right now, it's still in limbo Still says it's processing in the last leg in Lansing right before it comes here But it's been that way for like three days now so they gave me a $15 credit and in theory refunded me the full amount um, that hasn't shown up yet though and the item itself may still show up <clears throat> at which point they said I could keep it so it's possible I'll get a $300 laser for free which would be nice but at the same time or shortly after that I got that this guy up in the corner went on sale so it was normally 140 it went on uh, flash sale for 109 it's full color dual head and I was like okay that looks cool and in fact I liked it so much um, it went on sale like three days later for 99 So I went ahead and got a second one So I'm gonna probably put that in this corner Opposite of you know same kind of the way that is <clears throat> So they can cross each other I'm Gotta see exactly where because the other lasers there so <clears throat> I haven't figured that out exactly um, so overall impressions, 
Well, this one on the front is not my least favorite. Even with the beam splitter fog juice, I can still barely see the red. But it's got great blue. It's my favorite blue out of everything. It's the most vibrant blue and it's nice and bright. Um, and the two optical things in the front are a lot better with the haze juice. Um, so that actually is now worth something. But overall, considering I paid, well, I think it was originally $140, um, but they've since given me a $50 gift card because it went on sale after I bought it. And then I did an Amazon review on it. And they gave me a, a discount, which they're not supposed to do, but whatever. So all in all, I paid like $90 for it or something. Um, so it's still worth keeping up. Um, I might have returned it if I could have, but I'm already outside the return window. So, you know, whatever. Um, then, you know, I like the 5 Laser for its own set of reasons. You know, the colors are still the most vibrant and most distinct. And it's still the sharpest. Because, uh... Yeah, they're all separate colors. They're not trying to mix anything. It looks great in the fa the the beam, the the haze. Makes some really nice haze uh, lighting effects in in the fog. So that's definitely worth it. So that's probably my most expensive. I think that one was like 170. I didn't really get much of a sale on it. The uh, guy over here next to him isn't a laser necessarily. It's just the, you know, the five, well, six optical LED things, projectors. Those make really nice beams. Um, so that's worth it just for that. I mean, they look really great. Um, and that wasn't that expensive. It was like 120 or 130 or something. <clears throat> so then we got the guy in the back, which has the best patterns still. It's different than all the other patterns it definitely does its own thing full color pretty nice color most of the colors are pretty good again the red's the weakest but at least i can see it on that one for the most part and it makes some really nice patterns and like looks good on the screen this guy is the best value i mean like i said 119 and 99 for a double head laser full color rgb makes great colors in the fog i mean you can really see like the purples and the cyans it's it's nicely aligned now it shares the pretty much exact same patterns as this guy so it's still got the christmas tree and the little dj note um but it does more like rotation and pinching and stuff like that it has more motion with them um but it's the same kind of pattern to library but, I mean, considering it's two lasers, full color, for, well, you know, less than what the other one retails for, really great buy. I'm really happy with it, which is why I got a second one. Um, so I'm probably going to run them Master Slave with the DMX, kind of on their own. Whether or not I got a console, someday maybe, I don't know. Maybe fun to screw around. But at least then they can be, you know, kind of doing the same thing. Um, I'm going to give it a few days. Honestly, probably wait till we get back from Florida. Assuming we still go. Which I kind of have to go because we have a lot of money in it. So I'm really hoping I'm better in the next, like, ten days. They should be. Because I already feel a lot better. Um, even though I don't sound it. <laughs> but if the other one hasn't shown up after Florida, I'll probably go ahead and order it again. Assuming it's still available. Because I do, I do want it. You know, it's the most patterns. It's got some animations. Um, so that'll be cool. And the battery's about to die, so I'm going to switch it out. Well, I'm back from the wedding. Brother-in-law got married, finally. And I'm still pretty exhausted. The wife had to go to work. I feel bad for her. But, well, I still got a little energy. Here is the layout for the office. So the desk cells cleaned up. The uh, 
server is over here now. That's where all the movies and stuff live. And then I got my new monitor. Gaming computer is now over here. This is a tower of hard drives. It's just the USB enclosure. There's no intelligence to it. But basically when the hard drives are too small for the server and they get replaced, I stick them in here as like a secondary backup. And I'm actually got more drives than bays at this point. So I'm going to start pulling out the small, smaller ones and condensing everything down to the bigger ones and then put those back in here. And then I'll probably use the small ones for um, either traveling drives, the computer doesn't have a hard drive in it, it just has an SSD, so I can stick a hard drive in the bottom, probably do that just for some local storage. Printer is now living over here, next to the TV. It's more out of the way, easier to access the uh, paper and stuff. Barely fits because they have a legal paper tray in there for the length just to have on hand. So it's a little tight, but it works. Um, I pulled the desk away from the wall a little bit. I had shoved it all the way back, but that means I couldn't get any cords behind it. So now I, when it was emptied, managed to pull it forward just enough. This desk is so heavy. Uh, but we got to pull forward just enough to get an extension cord up on top. So the lava lamp has some power up there now. The light strip around the room has power up there now. Uh, I'll probably plug in the USB out tap so I can plug in my owl up there. Um, so there's that. The other computer is sitting down there at the moment. I do need to go ahead and hook him back up temporarily. Uh, there's some stuff on there I need to pull off. And uh, things like that. So it's going to probably just sit right here in the big open space for at least the temporary future. Um, I have a detailed explanation of some of the video encoding tests I was doing and overall impressions with the computer. Uh, it's definitely doing better with this monitor. Still got a little few weird behaviors. Um, first off, Hearthstone still crashes left and right. So that's obviously an issue with the game. Fresh install and everything. So I don't know if they've just added too much to it or what, but... It still crashes fairly regularly, even on the new computer. Um, that rear fan is still driving me nuts, so I need to quiet that down at some point, somehow. The monitor is behaving, or more specifically the graphics card is behaving better. Haven't really had it lock up to where I need to reboot the computer. Um, once in a while, like, if I'm playing with the LED lighting, it'll sometimes freeze up and go black and I have to completely reboot it. Um, I do have the TV connected via HDMI now. Um, I have the amplifier down here connected via HDMI now. Um, one weird behavior is that amplifier won't be recognized as a valid audio device. See, it's like not even said. It's not doing anything. It just spins up for no reason. Uh, and it's quite loud when it does. So I don't know what's up with that. But anyway, um, so the amplifier won't show up as an audio device unless I turn the TV on. I turn the TV on, it shows up. I can, it's actually the default, so it automatically switches over to it for audio. And then I can turn the TV off, and it's fine. It stays on. But I have to turn the TV on every time I want to output to the amplifier. Doesn't make any sense. Um, I thought maybe I just needed a monitor detected, so I actually ran HDMI out of the amp, back into the HDMI, and on the monitor. That didn't seem to do it. So I don't know if it's just a, a weird behavior at Windows 11 or what. It's there, it's powered on, nothing changes. I just flip the TV on and it, it magically shows up. I don't know, I don't get it. So that's a little annoying. Um, one of the things that is in Florida that I'll be bringing up here in about three weeks is I have an old Corsair premium speaker system. 
Corsair was not on the speaker market very long. Uh, but they actually did make a pretty good speaker set. Linus Tech Tips actually reviewed it back in the day. I bought it without even realizing that at the time. Um, but it's kind of funny. He actually was using it as his personal speakers there for a while, which I find funny. So those will come up here. It's a uh, bi-amped, two-driver design, plus a, I think, 8-inch subwoofer. So I'll be able to go line out of the computer into those because um, the speakers on the monitor are completely useless and craptastic. They are just not at all anything I want to listen to. I don't necessarily want to have my surround sound on every single time because, um, you know, it's up there in age too. So I don't want to put more stress on it than I need to. Plus, it's kind of overkill for just daily listening. Um, so that'll be nice to have on the desk. It should fit here really nicely. The cubes are not that big. And then, yeah, I'll just throw the subwoofer down there. Either under this other one, or maybe over in that corner. Well, that's kind of the cat pass here, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good. I don't really have any complaints. It's a lot more roomy. The performance of the computer is good overall. Just testing bugs to iron out still. It's kind of annoying having to re-log into all my web pages, though fortunately Chrome does save a lot of the passwords. But you know, I gotta re-authenticate all the security and install stuff that you don't even really think about that often. Like I just put Winamp back in. So you know, setting up new computers are always fun. Um but I am gonna go take a nap. And then probably have the other computer set up. Go over the video uh encoding discoveries. Short answer is I'm probably just going to encode an NVENC because the quality looks fine and it's like way faster than even the uh, normal rendering. So this computer is three times faster than the old computer rendering video and NVENC is about four times faster on this computer than the new rendering technique. So that's like 12 times faster <laughs> if that math works out. So like a 25 minute video actually encoded in like 58 minutes or something and I didn't really think about it at the time but it's probably going to be cut in half even more because it was a 60 frames per second video so you're talking twice the frames which in theory should just be twice the length of time to render so more than likely a 20 minute video that's 30 frames per second which is what I shoot most of the time would render in like 35 40 minutes so that'd be nice but yeah i need a, a nap because i got if i actually work them all seven days in a row coming up here because of the time i took off for the wedding so we'll see but just a quick update on the, the office the computer is set up and is now the primary although i still am transitioning and this is where we're looking like i see in a bit with the rest of the updates well i guess i'm sounding good enough to uh continue these updates it's been a while and several videos since the beginning of this clip we've had a whole bunch of laser stuff happen since then but we're picking this up after the wedding return clip so here's the desk with the other computer on it it's not too bad right i mean you can kind of still see around it. My wife's not complaining too much. It's definitely temporary though. Um, I figured out... You got enough RGB on here or what? <laughs> this is actually my old RGB keyboard that I was using for a long time even after getting that one. Because, I don't know, it's not per key or anything. It's just got a couple zones. It's, just, it's more vibrant, vibrant and I like the keyboard itself better as far as the layout and the button presses and things. But I'm trying to get used to the new one. Um, anyway, I figured out what I'm probably going to do with this one is I'm going to put it in the basement on top of the AV rack. Kind of where that other monitor that's only 1080 sitting now that's not really doing anything. 
The uh, reason behind it is this already has a built-in wireless dongle for a wireless keyboard and mouse. So I figure it would be a good basement computer. Uh, so I can use this instead of the laptop. If I want to continue to do things with REW. It could be um, a music server with an interface. So when we're working out I can easily pop up playlists and stuff. Um... Internet surfing would still be fine on it. You know, things that I, you wouldn't necessarily want a computer for. No, it's kind of out of the way. Um, because this other computer does not at all handle torrenting without crashing, I haven't exactly figured out why yet. I'm either going to have to go back to the torrent application that's built into my NAS. But I don't really want to do that. Um, or I'll just keep using this one to download stuff. Um, I can set it up to where it monitors a folder. So I can just get the actual .torrent files. And um, put them in a directory on the file server. It should pick them up and then automatically download. Or you know, I'll just go downstairs and actually just queue up whatever I want from time to time. To be determined. But once I'm done setting up the new one and I'm comfortable with it, that it has everything I need. I mean, I haven't installed my printer drivers, I haven't installed my scanning drivers, stuff I don't really use that often on the uh, new one yet. This can come back off the desk. Um, over here is the most expensive pair of headphones I have. It's my Neurophone. Picked those up after watching Z Reviews to do a pretty favorable review of them. I like them. Um, they're not super comfortable for long listening sessions especially when you have head pressure problems like I do right now with this COVID uh, and then over here is more of my daily driver headphones it's a Corsair Void Pro I believe um, I don't even really use them that often for the most part I will use the uh, speakers I was perfectly happy daily listening to the speakers that are built into my all-in-one Dell here. Um, they were perfectly fine for YouTube and you know, everything else. Unless I was really sitting down to listen to some music. That's all I needed. New computer, not so much. Um, once I get the uh, computer speakers from Florida, those Corsair. I don't even remember what they were. Whatever Corsair Pro speaker line they had. Um, then those will be kind of my daily listening. Uh, and the headphones will be just more when I need to be quiet. Which, considering the wife and I are going to be on separate shifts here for five weeks after Florida, she's got to finish up some training in Blood Bank, uh, then I'll be using the headphones pretty significantly for that. But as a general rule, I'll be using the speakers. Um, I think that's about it I had for that. Oh, um, I did get. The uh, monitor is listed as having rotation. Uh, it's got plenty of height adjust, like it's supposed to. And it til tilts, well, swivels, I guess, and tilts. But it doesn't rotate. Um, so I thought maybe the stand was defective or something. I got it refurbished, so I emailed the seller. It's like, hey, this isn't really working right. I don't really care that much, but, you know, can you give me, like, a discount or something? So I ended up sending me another stand, which is having the exact same problem. And then they looked up the tech specs and I confirmed this particular model doesn't have Rotate. So they have a couple very similar models, and some of them did based on the online reviews. But, again, it's not a feature I care about. I got the thing for, like, $60 off or something. Uh, being refurbished, so I'm not really worried about it. But no, I have an extra stand. Uh, both the cable management cover on the new one and the old one are broken. I broke the one on the old one, and the new one came broken, so it's kind of useless. It was kind of a stupid, barely management slot anyway, so whatever. Um, but yeah, that's that. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna pull up the uh, doc describing the video encode testing that I did and the speed results as well as documenting some of the issues I've been having with this computer right now he's behaving 
And as long as I'm not torrenting, for the most part, it's fine outside of coming out of sleep. Um, <clears throat> and the fan noise, which seems to be settling down a little bit. I don't know. Um, no, even when I'm encoding, it's not that loud. Um, both doing the NVENC encode, which is not pegging the CPU to 100%, so it actually runs at a higher clock. Uh, and the old encode that I was doing, just the Intel QSV, I think, where the CPU actually ran at a lower clock speed because it was 100% pegged, um, the fan doesn't ramp up that much because it's not getting that hot. It's just those short, quick bursts where it's going to like 4.5 gigahertz, where it probably doesn't even really need to for just refreshing a web page or doing a background unzip or whatever, that it shoots up to like full RPM and goes Voo! So, I don't know. I need to still talk to them about that. But let me pull up the dock and we can get into a little more detail about my experiences so far. Uh, a few other things real quick before I uh, get into the dock. A little hard drive down here. It's one of the first ones that I started pulling stuff off of to make room in the storage tower over here. Uh, it's actually the second of the drives that are that size. Those are the two old two and a half inch hard drives from my laptop. Uh, a few years ago at this point, actually several. Um, more than several. It's been, it's been like one of the first things I did when I moved to Michigan. Um, I ended up replacing both of the 750 meg, excuse me, gig, 750 gig hard drives with some SSDs. I think I put 1.2s in there or something. I know they were both bigger than these. So I think they were 1.2s. Um, so these came out... <laughs> I'm barely using them, honestly, because I haven't really used the laptop much since then. But it was worth it just to get the boot times to a reasonable level. That laptop is so old. It's still really good, though. But anyway, so <clears throat> I pulled these out and was basically just using them as um, offload storage for the, the server. Just in case the server ever completely craps out on me, because it's getting up there in age, too. It's got to be... Gee, 12 or more years old at this point. Uh, it started out as just a bunch of two terabyte drives, and I got you know four twenty terabyte drives in there now, plus two eighteen. So that's come a long way. Um, completely had to start over once with it. I'm not because it failed or anything, just because the version of the software that it came with, you could only expand the RAID so far past the originally installed capacity. It would only expand to a certain degree before it wouldn't expand anymore. They fixed that in the later firmware, but the only way to get it to kind of reset would to, was to restart the volume with the new firmware, so I did. So that was a fun moving data back and forth off of drives for days and days. Um, Server, see you back to hiding. So, I don't even remember where I was going with that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so just in case it ever craps out completely, you know, RAID's great if you lose a drive or something, but if the chip fails, if the power supply fails, if the OS gets corrupted somehow, you know, there are scenarios where that, all of that data is non-recoverable, or at least non-recoverable without some sort of expensive transplant. I don't even know where I'd get another chassis. Uh, I'm also not totally convinced moving the drives into a new chassis would even work. I don't know if it could recover itself like that. So, you know, I've as I put stuff on it, and I'm very behind at this point, um, I will copy things manually onto external drives just so I have a restore point for all my files if worst case happens. And, you know... Not only do I have all of the old server drives, but I also have this pile of um, external drives. Most of these are one and a half and two terabytes. Uh, I'm not even sure if I can see that. Hang on. Hang on, I have something to look at. 
Um, so it's like, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. The two, uh, kind of differently black ones on top are actually large. I think those are both eights. Pretty sure they're eights. Um, the one above that, I don't think is actually that large. But those are my USB 3. Uh, that's USB 3 drive too, so that might be another 8. In any event, those are my bigger ones. And then I have a, up here an old, like I think 256 gig uh, Mac store. That was actually, I got that at the same time I got my laptop. I came with that. That was an expensive drive at the time. And then I got this guy, which is a one terabyte graded drive. It's got two 500s in there. That was another thing. That was a my book one terabyte. That thing was super old as well. But one being one terabyte back then was like unheard of. And then on top of that, I have an old. I don't even know how big you are. I want to say 250 gig, maybe 500 gig. Uh, it's a 2.5 inch completely USB powered external drive. Uh, I got that just for convenience, but honestly, it, it, it's not that great. Half the time it gets undetected just because it loses power or whatever. And then, so I got my dedicated travel drive down on the bottom. That's also, I think, an 8 or a 10. That's the one we use when we go. Uh, to hotels and stuff. I got a subset of the stuff we want to watch. Got a little bit of this, a little bit of that, some movies, some TV. Um, and then above that is, I think, a drive I was going to send to a friend. You can see my brother in law's old hard drive that I keep around, which I actually was also using for backup. And then the other laptop hard drive. So, yeah, getting back to those. Um, so I was using those as off-site storage because, you know, I was basically out of space on the drives I had available, so I was kind of picking at straws, and it's been a while, but they fi I finally lost another drive. That drive crashed when I was copying to it. Um, I don't know if it caused it or if the computer caused it, but all the USB froze up. Keyboard lights turned off, mouse lights turned off, and now I can't access it. Can't access it in either of my drive bays. Can't access it on my USB um, little like external dock here. This guy's actually really neat. It's a SATA 3 USB to IDE and SATA, actually. Um, adapter, which is, you know, great before I got the other two things. It was like 30 bucks versus... I think I paid 280 for the bottom one and like a hundred and something for the top one. They were not cheap. Um, so using that, you know, it was only one driver two at a time, which was fine. And it's better than, you know, getting individual enclosures for everything. But nothing can read it. It spins up, it makes noise, but it's it's not detected. I get a USB device error on this computer. I don't get anything on the other computer. It actually causes like the USB chain to reset. So it just died. Um, I got about maybe two thirds of the information copied off of it before it crashed. I don't really know because I don't wasn't really around the time that it did it. But like I said, this is just duplicate of what is already on the server. Um, there should not be anything on any of these drives that is not still on the server. Um, when I did have not enough space on the server to where I had to pull stuff off of it, I always made sure it was at least on two other external drives. And I think everything's been reloaded to the server since then. Because its, it's capacity has increased substantially since that was an issue. So I don't think I've lost any actual data, and the folders that I was copying were like backups of my old mother's data, and my old data, and I think some of my like roommate's old data. It's nothing that's like critical. We're talking stuff I haven't needed to go through for a while. 
like old copies of Windows, and so it's got like you know app data and user data that it's mostly not important. But like I said, I should have it all on the server anyway. Um, so yeah, that died. Um, well, this short update turned into a long video. <laughs> Anyway, so the other things that are going on right now, so I'm in the process of, so these were in here on the top two bays. Um, so I'm in the process of moving the smaller drive data into the bigger drives, just to kind of repopulate some of these bays with these bigger disks. So right now I'm working on my first two terabyte drive. Uh, that's this guy over here. So he's almost emptied. Uh, I can probably get, and then transfer them to this one here, so I can get at least one or two more. Probably even, yeah, three is probably pushing them. I can get at least two more, uh, two terabytes on there, which I think is all the bays I need. Maybe, I might still be shorter bay, but, so that process has started. And then, in addition to that, I also started the process of adding the last disk to the server. Um, there's all the stuff on Amazon I've been looking at. But yeah, so this is now working on its fourth 20 terabyte disk. Um, so four of the six will be 20 terabytes, and then there's two 18, so it's in the process of resilvering and recovering the RAID for the 16 terabyte disk I just pulled out. So it's got another 60 hours plus, although usually that comes down, it usually doesn't take as long as it says. I mean, it was already up to like... 120 something and then down to 70 something since I started this just this night tonight um, So once it's done with that phase, then it actually goes back through and does a volume expansion phase Which takes longer usually another 50 to 60 hours I'm hoping it's done before we go to Florida. It should be historically because I'm Probably just gonna turn the server off. There's no reason for it to just be up here spinning when I'm down there, but at the same time, it's up almost all of the year anyway, so I might leave it so we can access it remotely. If I need to, I shouldn't really need to, but... Well, that's that process. It started at 20%, it's gained 8%, so it's not fast, and this is also kind of dangerous because it's now no longer redundant. So if I lose another drive during this phase, there goes with the data poof. Um, outside of what's backed up, but again, I'm, a lot of it's I'm kind of behind on right now. Anything I've downloaded in the last year, year and a half, has not been copied to external storage yet. Um, so I'm kind of just babying it along and hoping for the best. I haven't had it crash yet. Um, I did actually have it, the first 20 terabyte drive I put in it, it actually did freeze up. Um, but I was able to power cycle it and then it just continued and started the recovery and it was fine. But that was kind of scary for a minute. But yeah, so that's doing its copy process. This is doing this copy process. And that should bring up all of those projects. Now we can pull up the dock and we can get into that, you know, nine minute detour later. Real quick this time, I promise, before we get to the dock, you can kind of see, I kind of touched on it where where we are at with the lasers so I did miss the boat on these this double head DJ like guy from Gerlin. Um he's not 99 anymore he's back up to 139.99 which is usually where I've been seeing it um, you know when it was quote unquote 50% off they actually bumped it up to 199 um, and then 50% off to 99 but 139, 149 is usually where I see it. So with the coupon, it's 129. I'm going to hold off. You know, they'll probably go back on sale again. Like I said, after I bought it the last time, it went on sale like three days later for $10 less. Um, but I will keep an eye on that because I think I do want four. Originally, I was saying, you know, I'd rather get the more expensive lasers. 
um, and you know it's still f like four hundred dollars invested in this kind of same thing but I really like the way they twinned up I think they would look even s more cool in like a quad config so I think I really am gonna do that um, this guy up here is the one that does the animations I was talking about it's got like 256 built-in patterns and you can see I mean they're pretty cool I really should be doing a screen record or something, but you know, whatever. You get the idea. Uh, sure, we'll do that. <clears throat> um, so this is one I'm considering. Like I said, the, the company that's selling it did give me $20 rebate. And, um, yeah, I think it's worth it. That's the one I like the most. That one's kind of weird. Definitely have no use for that. But I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> it's got a lot of good patterns too. Um, but I am also kind of learning that when you're running haze, I almost don't even care what the patterns on the wall look like. Uh, I mean, when you're projecting onto a floor and whatever, that one's really cool. Um, then it matters, but when you're just looking at the beam effects, it doesn't really matter. What the, and so I'm getting a good range of beam effects just with the basic patterns that my other ones are doing. Um, so I'm kind of putting less emphasis on how many patterns it can do. But it would be nice to have it do some more stuff than what my current lasers can do, just for the sake of being different. See, that's really neat. That's really neat. Um, that's really neat. <laughs> There's a lot of really neat stuff. And like I said, for 139 which is often what it's on sale for, it seems like a good buy, even though it's only got the one head. So I'm pretty likely gonna get him. There's a competitor, uh, like a la light or something that's pretty much the exact same thing. You'll find most of these lasers are all cheap Chinese clones of each other. Um, so, you know, does it really matter which ones you get? Sometimes, yes. You know, they'll have basically the same laser, but one will have a power switch and one won't. Uh, or, like, there's one of these where they actually reverse the DMX plugs. So the N is actually supposed to, like, the out is, you know, one's supposed to be male, one's typically female. They flip the, the gender of the two ports. Which, you know, if you have the same two lights and you're running Master Slave, isn't really going to matter. Because the cables aren't directional. Uh, at least as far as I know. But, um, if you want to actually connect it to a console, you need to get, like, a gender adapter. So, I don't know. Here is the 1900 guy. Uh, I guess, while we're here, I might as well just do the video, too, so you can get an idea what the hell I'm talking about. This is the one that Amazon currently has lost. Uh, it's in limbo somewhere. Somewhere in Lansing. Um, I am much less hopeful of it showing up at this point. It's been over a week <clears throat> since it's had any kind of update. So probably somebody at the warehouse stole it. Um, this one does some really interesting stuff. You know, and again, how much of this it's going to do on, I mean, this should all be auto. Because I'm sure that's what they're running it in. They say a lot of the patterns you'll never see unless you run it through a DMX console. They're not set up in its default profiles. Um, but still, it's like I said, it's doing a whole bunch of different stuff that none of my other lasers do. And a lot of it's really nice. So, <clears throat> I'm still going to try to probably bite the bullet on him. You can see it actually does some of what the uh, that cheaper one does. Again, you know, there's probably a bunch of preset patterns that are just in the industry, kind of your, your standard stuff, and they're all kind of using the same ones. Um, but yeah, so I'll probably end up still getting him at some point. I'm hoping he'll go back on sale because, you know, they refunded the discounted price, which means if I get it now, I'm going to pay full price for it. So I'm going to be like, quote unquote, out $30. Because I'm not going to get the discount. But they did give me a $15 credit. So it's like $15 more. Still, if I get it back on sale, 
and even more of a sale, that'd be great. But it did go out of stock once, um, so I'm kind of hoping it doesn't do that again. Um, I don't know if I want to have this finished playing or not. You get the idea. This one, I believe, is just patterns. If it does any kind of animation, um, scenes and stuff, it doesn't really go over it in this video and doesn't discuss that anywhere. So that's why I still want to get one of the like $240 ones we'll show here in a minute that um, are basically the animation lasers. There's two of those I'm considering. One is decently reviewed from ShareLife. Um, I do have another ShareLife product, I think, or at least I've considered another one. It's got an SD card, so it comes with the laser software. You can edit the patterns, which means I can delete the ones I don't like. Um, and then maybe I can make some laser patterns. It sounds like the software is not real... Uh, you know, easy to use in that regard. Um, so maybe I will, maybe I won't. It's something to play with, though. And then the other version of it... So here's here's the cheap guy. Uh, basically the same thing. The video looks exactly the same as the other one. Which I guess I'll just pull that up real quick while we're talking here. Um, the only difference I can tell... First off, it's cheaper. Um, and... Sorry for the camera shake there. Um, it also has an SD card. Um... It looks like it also comes with the software, I believe, but it actually has a full ILDIA ILDA interface on it. So I could, in theory, hook it up to the computer and control it with a computer, like a laser light software program, um, and or upload directly to the projector. You know, how likely am I to do that? Not really. But the Surelife one has the SD card, but does not have the ILDA, ILDA interface. It got stripped out. Uh, it's also like, what, uh, 222 versus 249, 239, so it's like 20, 30 bucks more. Um, for what seems to be the exact same laser components, at least. Same wavelength, same power rating. Um, and the cheaper one only has like two reviews although it's saying it's shipping from the u.s which is nice um versus you know some chinese website where i gotta wait months for it to ship and show up um so i don't know i'm still on the fence whether it's worth it to go with the quote-unquote more name brand one i think one also might ship from amazon one may not uh so i haven't really decided on that which of those I would get, but I would still like to do one of them because, like I said, this specifically has animations. It's not just patterns. The downside is most of your animations are not music reactive. They're just for fun background. At the same time, you know, how music reactive are the other lasers anyway? You know, yeah, that five head matches beat perfectly. Um, the other ones, you know, I'm sure they're changing mode and color and stuff based on the sound, but they're usually doing stuff on their own too so it doesn't make that much of a difference honestly with so many lights going on at once you're probably not really going to notice or really care um so it might be fine just having animations play in the background it doesn't matter if it's going to the music or not um but they also both do have internal patterns that um are music reactive that isn't running a quote-unquote laser show through the SD card. Um, I don't know if or how many of these are that. Probably not many because they're showing off the animation portion of it. Um, but even if I wanted to just run it in music mode, um, I'm sure it's got patterns that these do not. Or the other ones do not, rather. I think it's repeating at this point. Um, well, I think it might be different. So yeah, so there's a few other things I'm considering on here, and I'm considering them for different reasons, as you can kind of see. Um, anything else of note? Not really. Like I said, this is a clone of the other one. 
U King's also got one. Um, it's got some interesting patterns that it does that it seems to be different. It actually hasn't went out of stock and hasn't come back in a bit. People were saying that the light sources are pretty different brightnesses, but you kind of expect that with a laser. Red, green, and blue are usually not the same brightness. You'd have to like way increase your red power to get it even close. And even then, most people wouldn't really be able to see the, the brightness comparatively anyway. So, that's a tour through my Amazon. All right, now for reals, the dock. 12 minutes in. Wow, I'm bad at this timing thing. Okay, I have the render dock up as promised. Um, the only thing I was going to potentially update was I was going to check the fog level. I'm not realizing the other video was only 15 minutes, it barely used almost anything. Um, but this is about 40 minutes of using the laser and the fog <coughs> hazer, excuse me. So I was going to double check the fill load and kind of see where we're at. I tell you, you get about two hours out of a fill, and I only filled it about a third of the way because if it did like not work or malfunction after my second or third use, I didn't want to like have a full thing of fluid in it. Um, but that's two floors below me. I don't really feel like going down and checking that right now. So that'll be an update in a future video. Um, I figure while I'm going through the dock, you guys can have something to look at. So this is the last laser show which will probably go live prior to this other video rendering. Uh, this is the first 30 frames per second NVENC video that I'm encoding on this computer. So it's fun watching it go like literally twice as fast as the uh, 60 frames per second version because you don't have frames, so twice the speed. And uh, it definitely does it in spurts, but it's pretty cute. So this is an exactly 40 minute video. And it's saying it's going to take about 43, 44 minutes to render. It usually goes a little slower than it says. But that's practically real time. That ain't nothing to snooze at, for sure. Alright, so. <clears throat> why are we using NBank? Because the uh, first laser show that I did, that's been up on the channel for a couple weeks now, I think, um, I did several recording or rendering passes on it to kind of see which ones worked and performed the best. So that was a 23 minute, 10 second video. Uh, it looks great on the OLED by the way. Stick the C1 in filmmaker mode, all of this grain goes away. Uh, a little bit less so now that the, the haze is on there. You can see a little bit of the haze or the grain because of the haze. But the last video didn't have any haze, so it, basically the lasers were floating, and it was pitch black, and it was beautiful. Um, but we used all the default settings for Magic's HEVC, because it's all HEVC encoding, regardless. Uh, it was the first video with HEVC incoming footage, because I was doing 60 frames per second. Um, the GoPro automatically goes into HEVC. Um, this one is back to whatever its default MPEG-4 codec is. I don't actually know. So, the 23 minute video under NVENC encoding took 55 minutes, 45 seconds to render. Uh, it definitely used more GPU. Because um, the regular Intel barely touched the GPU considering it had hardware acceleration turned on. It ended up being 6.7 gig, which is about twice as big as the 40 minute video, the normal way. Uh, is that right? I think I was saying it was about as big as a 40 minute video. Uh, twice as big as a 23 minute video would have been. Um, but it looked good. But what I didn't realize at the time that I wrote that is it was 60 frames per second. You have double the frames, you're going to have double the data. Double the encoding bitrate is going to be needed to maintain equal quality. So honestly, it's about even. Um, low latency VBR, 40 to 80 megabits per second was the, the default settings on that. Um, then the usual way that we did it was Intel QSV. 
that ended up being 6.48 gig as well. So, you know, 0.3 gig smaller than the NVENC. Nothing really to, to worry about there on this particular video. So that took about four hours, a little over to render. So that's, you know, quite literally four times lower. And this is on the new machine. So that would have taken closer to 12 hours on the other machine. Um, the first time I did it, it crashed before I could verify exactly. Like I said, the computer's definitely been having stability issues related to the graphics card and sleeping power. So, you know, the computer went to sleep and I turned it back on and I, I saw it briefly the end screen and then I, the computer black screen. I had to reboot it. Um, it has sort of been resolved connecting it to this monitor I, I have in here. We'll see if it did. It, it more or less does. Once in a while it'll still do it, unfortunately. I even had it once where it was outputting to the TV still, but the main monitor wouldn't wake up. So I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe it's a display port problem versus HDMI or, or something. I don't know. Um, otherwise, like I said, I'm going to have to call support. Um, so Intel QSV is definitely more CPU heavy, the machine runs louder and hotter, higher utilization, GPU is almost completely idle. Um, it looked like it was more noisy in colors like purple and stuff, um, would have more of a noise. Looking at them after the fact I'm not quite convinced, they look pretty similar to me, but if anything it, it might be a little noisier than the NVENC, it's really not any worse. The end rank that is. Um, so, and at some point, I don't know if it's because it crashed or when it crashed, but that video gets messed up. It didn't look like it completely rendered. Um, it said it completed, I thought, but like 20% in, the frames jumble and stop advancing altogether on playback or sync, though there still is running audio. So I'm not really sure what happened there. Um, the same settings, balanced, 40 to 80 VBR. Honestly, it totally seems not worth it. Um, I wasn't going to re-render another 4-hour video to get an exact compilation, but of what I could see, it looked fine. It didn't look any better, honestly. And for, you know, a quarter of the time, I'm just going to continue to use the NVENC. I've uploaded several videos in NVENC so far, and I haven't had any complaints. Um, let's see here, I'm going to take a break, hang on one second. Well, it's been several weeks since I wrote this, so I'm not totally sure I understand. I either had to re-render a different video, because the project was fine when I looked at it, but it also crashed at the end. Um, when I started to watch the video, it started in a weird space, it started like 40 minutes, excuse me, 40 seconds in, it was missing the very beginning, even though it was in the project and nothing changed. Uh, and there was a whole bunch of blank space at the end, like the video was a lot longer than it should have been. Again, even though the project looked fine and re-rendered just fine. So I'm not really sure what <clears throat> happened with that. Um, but I got the information I needed for the encode. Now, I'm not sure if that was the main concept HEVC encoding that I tried, or if that was another video that I was trying to render in the Intel QSV again. Um, I'm not real sure, but I think it was the main concept HEVC. Uh, that was using more GPU than the Intel QSV. But it was not using as much GPU as the NVIDIA NVENC was. CPU was about the same, um, pretty close to max. It seemed to start out slower, but it did pick up speed. And the current ETA for that was 1 hour and 44 minutes. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the one that I was talking about that crash though, because I don't have a final ETA in that, just to, to, to guess. And it rendered out about 6.5 gig. But again, it had a couple, like, minute or two of blank space at the end and was missing about 40 seconds in the beginning. So, file size should be close, but not exactly 100%. Um, but yeah, I'm not seeing any reason not just to use NVENC with those results. Um, as you can see, it's going pretty dang fast, and the quality looks fine. Uh, the CPU doesn't 
seem to run as well, I don't know. It probably is running hotter because it's running at a higher boost. It boosts to three pretty consistently. As a matter of fact, we can pull that up now. Um, versus sitting in the 2.5 range, which basically it's a hard 2.5, 2.6, maybe 2.7 when it's doing NVENC and it's running at 100%. With this, you can see it's doing more like 3, 3.1. And the usage is actually kind of yo yo in here a little bit. Uh, between 61%, I'm assuming that's in frame, 61%, 80%, and the GPU usage is about 22%, 4%, it goes kind of back and forth, um, so I'm not really sure what deal with that is, it's, you know, it's probably buffering, you know, it's, it's taking a minute to, like, it feeds frames to the GPU, then the GPU processes them, and then defeats some more frames, and that's probably what it's kind of doing that. Temperature is 86, you know, not great, but not horrible. <clears throat> Noise on the computer is fine. This I could deal with, especially if it's doing something. When it really zooms up there for literally no reason, that's when I get a little perturbed. Um, it says it's been going for however long I've been talking, give or take, a little bit where I paused. It's down to about 34 minute ETA. I'm going to go ahead and let this finish so we can upload. That brings you the updates, more or less, on the rendering. Computer stability as a whole, um, like I said, it mostly seems to be an issue when uTorrent's running. I thought it was Hearthstone, but Hearthstone running by itself, outside, I think, of one or two disconnects, it's been behaving. It was really only locking up and forcing it to crash and go like red and green while I was using the torrent in the background. Um, blue screens that I've had with this thing, I'm getting DPC watchdog violation. I get bad pool caller most of the time I get a blue screen. I did see a driver IRQL, not less or equal. And then what failed was tcpip.sys. So that's obviously a networking protocol. I had system thread exception no, oh not system thread exception not handled. I think that's part of that driver IRQL thing. Um, DPC watchdog and bad pull both are referring to drivers. I believe it's possible that it's video card driver. Uh, I don't know that was a hard and fast. I think it was also they were saying um, SSD was a, a likely culprit as well. Um, I've had where the black where the computer will black screen. You know, it's still responding. I can cap lock and the keyboard changes. It'll wake up from sleep and the fans will spin up, but I can't get the display. Um, when I have to actually hard reboot the computer, even putting it to sleep and waking it back up doesn't work. I actually have to hold it down and reboot it. That's usually when the driver for the video card is not there and I have to actually go ahead and either um, remove, disable and re-enable the video card for it to re-detect it uh, or reinstall the driver. Windows will usually say that it stopped the device due to an error and that's why it has an exclamation point. Um, and then the audio, like I said, is missing until it's back up and working. Goes to its, you know, your default 640, 480, or maybe 1080 video output until it's, you know, detected besides something other than a generic video device. It does that less often with this monitor, but it still definitely does it. Um, I think that's it. I haven't used the computer much beyond just running Vegas. Is this Vegas? Yeah. And Hearthstone. Um, file management it does the typical Windows stuff. Sometimes it'll say files are missing or inaccessible and I have to restart the transfer. That's just Windows being Windows. Windows file transfer has never been great. Um, so I don't really blame the computer for that. Uh, the RGB lighting freezes a lot. Uh, again, more so seems to be like when the computer is having other issues with torrenting and it freezes and I have to restart it. Um, I've also unlinked 
the lighting from Aurora Creator and I unchecked the CPU acceleration for smoother radiation. It seems to be like that more now. Um, so yeah, as long as it's not crashing with the rendering, which with the end bank it really hasn't seemed to be, and I'm not doing stuff in the background, or at least I try not to. Uh, and as long as I torrent on the other computer, I guess for the most part it's fine. I still don't necessarily totally trust this 3060. Maybe it's not quite sitting in the slot right. Maybe it took a little bit of abuse in shipping. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to contact Azu support at some point. Probably when I get back from Florida because I really need to get myself back to work. I've been calling in way too much. I, I still get a little bit of motion sickness or a headache when I move. But for the most part today I've been able to stay out of bed and get some stuff done and feel okay. Uh, the other reason I didn't want to go to work too early is because he had me scheduled seven days in a row right before the trip. And so even before I got sick, I was planning on calling on Sunday to at least give me three days in three days. I, I can't really do more than three or four days in a row. It drives me crazy and I get exhausted. Um, so I didn't want to like, you know, come back to work and have to work five or six uh, or seven well, five or six, really, at this point. Um, or, like, work two and then call in again after having called in the last five times. So, at this point, if I go on Sunday, which I think I'm going to, it's four days. I can do four in a row. The only downside is Sunday going to work. I typically have to walk if the wife is working the weekend, which she is this weekend. Um, and the buses around here, unfortunately, the Sunday bus stops about 6 o'clock p.m. Way too early for me to go to work. I don't have to be able to work till 10. Uh, so I think I'm going to hitch a ride with the wife. She goes in at 8.30, maybe a little earlier. Because um, I'd rather be there an hour and a half early than, like, four hours early. And because I've missed so much time this week, um... I could certainly use the extra hour and a half and I'm sure they need me to do the extra hour and a half of work because when I'm not there my job doesn't get done pretty much. Uh, basically I'm an overnight stalker so I stock the bags and clean up the registers that are more of like front end cashier stocking and when I'm not there stuff doesn't get done. Now when I'm not there for five or six days they can't not do anything because they only have about two days worth of bags before they're completely out. Maybe three if they're lucky. So I'm sure they've done some stocking. But I know, you know, when I'm missing for a day or two, um, I have significantly more work to do than when I'm there every day. So I'm sure everything is behind and I could find an hour and a half worth of things to do when I'm there. So point being, if I'm doing that, and because I didn't really get to prepare for the trip while I was off, because they felt like crap and wasn't really doing much, um, that's going to keep my time pretty occupied until we leave. Fortunately, I am off Thursday, and we're not leaving the, for the airport until late on Friday, so I should be able to do some stuff those days at least. Uh, contacting computer support and dealing with that and uh, you know whatever is not going to be among it I'm sure they're going to want me to like pull out video cards uh, I'm hoping they don't want me to re-image the computer but that's an option because I haven't really done that much with it yet I don't know if we're going to have to ship components back and forth I really don't know how they're going to handle anything so it's a mystery that I want to deal with when I have more time to focus on just that um, so I'm going to go ahead and add this to the update about being back from the wedding. Um, probably the sitting down and talking about the laser show before this one that I shot in 30 frames per second that I haven't attached to anything. Call that all one video. It's probably going to be close to an hour, maybe even more with so, some of the segues that we did. That'll probably go up after this one, because I need to download the footage and compile all of that. And this one will be done and ready to go before that. 
order doesn't really matter so much on this. Um, you know, you'll see a laser here that I haven't really discussed yet. But, you know, that's fine. You'll figure it out. And then, I don't think I'm going to shoot or record or edit anything else before Florida. Um, I don't know that I'm going to do any filming in Florida. It's possible. I'll probably bring the camera just in case. We're going to go to Halloween Horror Nights and stuff. But they typically, I don't think, want you to film in the houses. Um, and filming the scare zones and stuff. It's like, whatever. I'm not really going to do a vlog. It's not my style. Um, but I'll have it if anything fun or exciting happens. We are going to go to Cocoa Beach as well. Hang out at the Cocoa Beach Pier. So maybe I'll take some video of the ocean or something. But I don't really anticipate putting any of that on the channel. It's mostly just going to be for me and the wife. Um, I never even really uploaded a lot of the wedding footage. I uploaded the wedding itself. But we took a lot of hikes and stuff. And I did record most of that. I was testing out the GoPro. It was basically the second... First time I had it. First event was the wedding. Um, so I used like the helmet strap and stuff like that. Um, stuff that's, you know, pretty boring. Just us talking, walking through the woods. I don't think I ever put that online. I probably will, though. Just so like, my parents and stuff can see it. If they're interested. Um, and I don't really hide anything on the channel. So, you know, as you can go back in my history, you'll see... All sorts of stuff. Um, so, I don't know. There may or may not be videos about that. It's certainly not going to be in the playlist, though. Um, next video for the playlist... When I get back, I guess, depending on how finances go, because I am also getting the rest of the stuff. Like I said, I have that speaker system that come up here. I'm getting my parents' back bar. Um, there's quite a... There's old computers. There's more speaker systems, because I have my, my subwoofer. My other subwoofer is also going to be coming home with us. It's a dual 10 inch. Um, just miscellaneous stuff that I couldn't make the trip when I moved up here f five years, six years ago at this point. Jeez. Um, clearing up my parents' house, some stuff they want to get rid of. We're actually inheriting their bed because they're downsizing to a queen and we want to upgrade to a king. So that works out. Um,. So I guess we'll, you know, have a video showing some of the new home theater related toys. You know, the new speaker system for this, that's the new subwoofer for downstairs. Uh, maybe some bar lights. I don't know if I'm getting any of that or not. Um, to be determined. And then after that, it's probably about time I get back into home theater. <clears throat> um, having the new subwoofer will be a pretty perfect opportunity to finally rerun Odyssey and recalibrate the system. Yeah, I know there were definitely a couple of mistakes with the first calibration. One of the speakers was in the wrong mode. Um, I think I might have reversed my left and my right in the taking of measurements. Uh, the room's definitely got more things in it now. Um, it's hard surfaces and new furniture, so that's going to change the acoustics a bit. So it's it's good to run rerun Odyssey, get a more accurate representation, and I know better what I'm doing. See if I can make my sound any more good. Um, it's certainly enjoyable watching movies. You can hear the surround sound channels. I don't know that I personally am getting like the most convincing acoustic bubble of you know sound moving from place to place. So there probably is some balancing that needs to be done between the Atmos and the rear surrounds and stuff. Um, hopefully Odyssey will kind of dial that in and maybe I'll tweak from there. I did boost the ceiling speakers before because I didn't really hear much up there. Um, so, you know, that's the deal. Talk to you later. Well, that was abrupt, but the wife came home, so I wanted to say hi to her real fast. Um, we'll just end cap it. So the video finished rendering... I assume it's fine. It looks okay. Uh, the computer reset itself and was recently rebooted when I came back upstairs. Went to the living room and watched Spider Chronicles had some food uh, while I was finishing the render. So at some point it just reset. Who knows why? <sighs> no errors or anything. It just does that sometimes. Anyway, so I did go downstairs to the basement real quick and look at the haze level in the bottle. It looks untouched. If anything, I'd say there's more in there, which obviously is not possible. So, 
it sips it. It barely drinks anything at all. Uh, if I did fill it, that's probably going to last me like, <laughs> based on the video so far, seven, eight, ten hours. Who even knows? And that's, you know, about a fifth of the bottle. Because I think it's like 0.287 liters or something. And it's a gallon of fluid uh, is the, the main jug. So it's a good buy. It will last me forever. Anyway, we're going to Florida, so um, I will edit this and get everything uploaded. We'll have a couple things to watch, but that's going to end this one here. And like I said, we'll go ahead and get back into more home theatery stuff when I get back, probably. Uh, depending on how money goes and how sh Amazon shopping lists go. There may be a few more lasers to add to the pile, too, but primarily I'm going to start moving back into home theater stuff. Now, content's still going to be few and far between because it's really not that much to add at this point although like I said when I first get back we will have some new stuff to look at new, new here's what things. I found shut up Alexa <laughs> anyways caught you later thanks